President Muhammad Buhari's ally Buba Galadima has said that 447 recipients of the recent national awards should be in prison. And the ADC set to flag off campaigns in Kogi October 20th as former party chairman Ralph Morsu alleges plans for fresh presidential primaries. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Buba Galadima, a former close ally of President Muhammad Buhari, has criticized the National Honors Awards recently given out to some of Nigerians by some Nigerians, I beg your pardon, by President Buhari. Now, according to Galadima, 440 out of the 470 recipients of the award should be in prisons because they were doubtful characters. The new Nigeria People's Party chieftain added that none of the individuals given national honors was of impeccable character. He suggested that the award should be given to people who he um, who retired without blemish and had not been questioned by either the EFCC or the ICPC. Recall that President Buhari on Tuesday conferred national honors on 447 Nigerians tagged Friends of Nigeria. Recipients of the national awards included leaving and deceased Nigerians and some foreigners. Well, joining us to discuss this is Achike Chude. He is a political analyst and, of course, uh, he is here with us. Good, mo good evening, um, Mr. Chude. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Marianne. Great. Um, I'm sure you were part of all those who watched live as Mr. President handed out these awards. Um, to several Nigerians, um, it, it did, of course, when the first list was leaked, um, many people had um, criticized the fact that the Minister of Information or Minister for Information was on that list, um, especially the students um, who have been home for more than eight months. Uh, and, and at the time, we did get a response from the federal government saying that that's not the origin, original list. And... Um, and when the updated list would come out, we would, uh, you know, be singing a different song. But um, when the original list came out, we still saw the Minister of, of Information and several other people uh, who made that list. But let's start with those who were deserving of these national honours, Mr. Chude. Well, natural, national honours are, you know, a recognition of uh, people who have been outstanding in their commitment uh, to the Nigerian nation. People who have lived by example, and the people who whose lives should be emulated by the rest of uh, the citizens, and uh, and the essence of uh, of that is to recognize a uh, character, hard work, dedication, commitment, uh, you know, to social transformation, uh, you know, as a basis for national development, and uh, it is it is good to do such things because. Um, uh, it encourages other people to strive for higher virtues. And then, you know, when you have um, uh, people who, you know, want to learn and want to emulate uh, noble characters, then the possibility of uh, those people wanting to live the kind of lives that those other people had lived uh, can only augur well uh, for the general welfare and progress of uh, the state. So it's a very good thing. Uh, it will, to give a recognition to who, uh, you know, recognition is due. Um, but, but obviously, uh, we have seen over the years uh, the the kind of uh, disinterest that Nigerians seem to, to have been showing uh, for quite some time uh, with regards to those who are on the risk list of merit, those who are given these national honors. Uh, because in most cases, I mean, apart from the controversy of um, of uh, the people, of, of those behind the award, not doing their due diligence, we have had instances where people who, who had long been dead were also brought up to uh, receive national honors. And the people who had been given, you know, higher honors like the GCFR, for instance, GCON, you know, or people who, you know, were now being given 
um, awards that are even lower than what they had previously have been given. So that gives you an idea of uh, the selection process of, uh, you know, by those, uh, you know, who are in charge of, um, you know, ensuring that this, uh, you know, that the right kind of people are given awards. So if they can get it so wrong in the areas that I have mentioned, then you can actually begin to question the credibility of the awards themselves. Let's talk about, um, the, many people applauded the fact that um, Adadevo, who um, should have been honored even before the, the uh, exit of President Goodluck Jonathan, finally, um, you know, got that award. Now, we all know what she did for the country and even lost her life in the process. Uh, we saw the likes of uh, the um, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Amina um, J. Um, I, I, I'm forgot. I'm mis losing her last name. Anyway, um, we also had um, we also had Ngozi Okonje Wala. Uh, we saw the man who um, protected Christians from being mobbed in the north. Um, we also saw a few good Nigerians. We saw some of our musicians who were given uh, some reward. But let's go back to what Buba Galadima said. He talked about the fact that. Um, the recipients that he saw were boys for, of Mr. President. He said that this was an award for the boys as opposed to people of impeccable character. Now, we also saw governors being, um, you know, awarded. Um, and, and this also raised eyebrows. For example, we had Governor Okowa, who was the vice presidential candidate of the PDP. We also saw the governor of Cross River State, uh, ben Benedict Ayade, and, and of course, that yeah. also uh, raises questions as to what exactly you know, were, were the yardsticks for which yeah. you know, people were measured uh, to be given this particular honors. Well, uh, Buba Galadema has given his take on that. Obviously, if uh, the, other, the, the names of uh, people you mentioned that uh, Nigerians who, uh, you know, actually believe are deserving are exempt from the names of uh, those people, he said, from those people that uh, he said have questionable characters mm. and lack integrity. So obviously, people like Okonjo uh, the and the other people that uh, you mentioned, the man who you know protected Christians in the midst of uh, the against the onslaught by you know bandits I and mean, by terrorists, uh, the entertainers that we had that we have in this you know in Nigeria that have made you know uh, brought so much joy to Nigeria and made the country proud. All of these people, I believe, would make the list of those that Buba Galadima was talking about, that these are the people that are truly deserving of uh, these awards. In these awards, for instance, you talked about uh, the you know, Minister of uh, Information, uh, who is not um, you know, very well loved by Nigerians, uh, whom a lot of Nigerians you know, see as somebody uh, who never walked to talk from the moment I mean, he came to you know, government, where uh, he was now... You know, he continued with the propaganda, you know, uh, that led to the ouster of the prop of the former president, and then, you, you know, I, I, and and has not really enamored himself, you know, to Nigerians. Then you also have the minister of um, labor, uh, you know, Chris Ngige, uh, who has been in the eyes of the storm, especially because of the way he has handled the ASO issue, ASO the university students that have been on strike, and some of these comments he made in the past, which were outright falsehood where he said that the doctors who are on strike at a particular point in time they can, can continue with the strike, they can leave the country if they want, because Nigeria has, you know, more doctors, or has enough doctors, which is an absolute lie. The doctor-patient ratio in Nigeria is one of the worst in the country, and doctors are, and medical personnel keep on living. You also have the former, you know, uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria, who left in a cloud of controversy when he was accused by his... Uh, fellow justices of the Supreme Court in an unprecedented manner, you know, of a, of, of a outright corruption. In fact, the, his fellow, uh, you know, uh, 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 justices of the Supreme Court actually called for the anti-corruption body to investigate the former, former chief judge of, of the Federation. So when you have glaring cases like we have, like some of these ones I have mentioned, for instance, when, you know, a, the government has to err, the government has to err on the part of caution. But obviously, did not, the government did not do that. And why did the government not do that? Because this is not a government that values integrity and character, you know, as a basis for national development. 
And I would say so. But, look but, at for Mr. instance. Mr. Chile, there are people uh, the, who, the, who would differ, who would beg to differ on that. Because they, again, they let's not forget that differ. this government, I, 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 yeah. this government yeah. came in, you know, with that zero tolerance for. Um, you know, corruption, they talked about... In fact, it took the presidency six months to be able to pick members of his cabinet saying that he was looking for men who were upright and men of integrity. So when you say that this government, um, you know... Mary, Mary, Mary Ann, Mary Ann, under this government, Nigeria is losing four to 700,000 barrels of crude oil every day. Under this government, ships, you know, super tankers are bathing in the nation's waters. And they're siphoning the, the oil of this country. And the, the military forces, you know, find themselves also embedded with the criminality that is going on. This was, you know, a, a, a statement that is credited in a live interview to come to Tompolo. You know, a man who the government has already given a contract to try to protect the nation's pipelines. You know, and the furtherance of that, he was able to tell us about the atrocious activities of people who were stealing Nigeria's oil, you know, without consequences. Uh, are we talking about under this government when the 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 the, the anti anti corruption uh, czar, uh, the uh, Mago, Ibrahim Mago, was accused by the same government that appointed him of high hand of corruption and high hand high handedness, you know, in the treatment of the corrupt cases in the country. And as he was being accused that the panel set up for him, he was also accusing the chief justice, I mean, sorry, the, the minister of justice and attorney general of the federation of corruption. So the two most important personnel, apart from the president, who are supposed to be fighting corruption, were accusing one another of corruption. Under this government, you, 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 I mean, you realize what happened. Some of us are aware about what happened with uh, the accountant general of uh, the federation who stole over 100 million naira. So what are we talking about? Look at the report of Amnesty International. I understand that you want to also play the devil's advocate. But you cannot do that in the midst of glaring evidence and facts, you know, that all of us have seen. Amnesty International obviously has continued to, 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 to list Nigeria as one of the most corrupt countries in the world since this administration came to power in 2015. So this is not about, you know, uh, somebody making up stories. These are, these are verify, empirically verifiable, you know, evidence of the corruption and graft that is going on in this country. And so when you look at the political elites, and who are the people that are heavily involved in the political elites? The civil servants and the politicians. And I wager a bet that if we had a proper anti-corruption agency in this country, and if we had proper leadership that was truly disdainful of corruption in, in Nigeria, most of these people that you are seeing today, and I agree with Boba Galadema, are people that should end up in prisons. Are you talking about the political elites? A country that is blessed the way Nigeria has been blessed. And we know that corruption is endemic. When corruption is endemic and corruption is systemic. And those people who are involved in corruption are, are the politicians who are in a position to affect you know, positive leadership and, and transparent change in governance today. And so when you talk about endemic corruption, the people who are in a position to, to actually... Uh, 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 conduct themselves in transparent manners are the ones that are perpetrating this corruption, and they are the politicians. There is no government to uh, governor to today, as far as I'm concerned, today that is not involved in corruption. You know, this is my own personal. So it's not just this is my own personal. So, personal, so how do how do know, corrupt uh, people choose people that are of impeccable character, in the words of Buba Galadima? Because I mean, from all that you've said, it looks like. Every single hand is stained with some form of corruption. No, no, not, not every single hand. There are, there, are, there are some exceptional people that Boba Galadema mentioned, and I also agree with, and there are so many of them. The entertainers, for instance, who have brought so much joy and glory to Nigeria. The, the sports men and women who have done wonderfully well. People like Tobia Musa. These are extraordinary characters, you know, and they're but not the politicians, not the politicians. Fashola is, is also you know, in, 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 in that list. And I, I think that because corruption is endemic and systemic, it is difficult, you know, to isolate any politician, you know, from the you know, corruption that has taken place in this government. If you want to look, look deeper, you realize that these people, you know, are not people of impeccable character. That is my own take. 
you know, about what is going on in virtually every... I will say, if you are going to, for instance, isolate people like Ingeke, isolate people like, you know, Fashola, isolate people like, uh, you know, and some of, 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 of these other people, then you cannot say that corruption is systemic and endemic. It is systemic, it's endemic. That means that it is everywhere. In virtually every department, you know, every ministry, you know, every sector in this country. And that is unfortunate. But not all Nigerians are corrupt. We have had instances of Nigerians who have recovered hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, and pounds in the airport, in taxis, in uh, Keke Marwas, you know, 500,000 here and there, 1 million here and there. And these people went to look for the owners and went out publicly to, to you know, report their fine to the media mm. so that the owners could be tracked down and their money is given back to them. So these are Nigerians, and there are so many of them on the streets of, uh, of this country. There are so many of them, so many of them in corporate organizations you know, across the country. So it is not every Nigerian that is corrupt. But okay. the politicians that are being given, you know, national honors are being given national honors on the basis of the of, of the job that they have done for the government, jobs that are not that do not necessarily tally with the greater interests of the Nigerian state. So when Buba Galadima said that these are these are jobs, these are awards that are given to boys, the president. Uh, you know, who did certain things that were not necessarily in the interest of uh, the nation. I would not disagree with Buba Galadema. He knows. He's in the mix. He's a politician like them. And so he knows what he's talking about. And because corruption is systemic and endemic, I also know that most of these people, especially the political class, who have kept on disappointing us time and time again, are not deserving of these awards that have, that have been given to them. Let's talk about the reputation of this. The, these honours, this national honours, uh, I, I mean, going forward. I mean, because Buba Galadima had also mentioned that he, President Buhari, had in time past criticised um, former presidents, Good Luck Jonathan and uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, of, you know, rewarding people who, um, you know, their friends um, with these honours as opposed to people who were well-deserving. And now he, he seems to be falling in that category. Going forward, would this be held, still held in high regard or high standard, or would it just be a what come one, come all affair going forward? Can it be returned to its pride of place if there be any time that it was a very prideful thing? No, no. Well, you see, when we, when we have a different class of politicians and political elites, you know, who show commitment to Nigeria, who are truly patriotic, who have a sense of vision and mission on behalf of the country, not, not on behalf of themselves, then you can begin to talk about the return of values and the right kind of ethos uh, in Nigeria. Um, right now, uh, the inclination of uh, the elites, you know, is towards self-aggrandizement. And that's why the country is the way it is. You know, and uh, I think I read somewhere about uh, an American uh, recently, I think today, I can't remember the details now, he was talking about the the kind of um, you know bargaining, elitist bargaining in the country, you know that has led the country to where it is, mm. where it is an elite, a collect elitist bargaining that you know emphasizes uh, you know Nigeria remaining as a rental state, where the elites continue to milk the country dry, uh, you know, and so we need to have a new kind of thinking, a new kind of political leadership. A new kind of uh, a new set of people who truly believe, you know, that this country can be great, but can only be great when they themselves play their part, uh, you know, towards making the country great. It is not this set of people because the values of this set of people are corrosive, uh, you know, and, and 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 driven by corruption, motivated by corruption, and driven by corruption. And so I am not surprised, you know, with the list, but it also gives gives an idea really. Of uh, of uh, the the thinking of uh, the the president with regards to uh, you, you know to the disposition of uh, the average Nigerian you know politician. Mm. Finally, what would posterity remember President Buhari for? Again, coupled with what we saw happening uh, this week at that um, uh, award ceremony and all the things that have happened, because of course uh, the clock is ticking. Days are. Uh, um, for the elections are drawing closer and closer because it seems like this month of October is running very fast. Um, 
What would posterity be remembering President Buhari for? I mean, you mentioned a lot of things, the oil theft, uh, the issue of banditry, um, you know, that has metamorphosed into all kinds of, you know, insecurity, uh, and all of the divisions that we've seen across the country, the downturn in the economy, no thanks to the war in Ukraine or even COVID. But what would posterity remember President Buhari for? President Buhari will be remembered, you know, as a man who strived and strived and strived to become president of this country and who was not given that opportunity uh, about three times, you know, and then eventually when it was his turn to become the president, all the forces galvanized around him with a new sense of belief that perhaps all of his striving to become president could have been born by out of a deep desire to want to change Nigeria for good. And so that translated into the votes that the president got. And those votes came with a lot of hope and optimism that we think Nigeria was going to get better. He will be remembered as, as a man who made a lot of lofty promises to the adulation of the Nigerian people you know, and having got into power, spent eight years in power and was not able to achieve anything, any of the any of the promises that he made to the country. In the in the areas of security, protecting Nigerians, in the areas of economy, transforming, you know, the welfare of uh, Nigerians, in the area of uh, anti-corruption, you know, that corruption will be reduced to its barest minimum. And Nigerians will remember him for as a man who came and promised a better life. But by the time he left, the life of the average Nigerian had become excruciatingly difficult, you know, uh, and almost impossible. I think that these are the things that Nigerians are going to remember him for. There, there are those who will believe that he tried his best, but that his best was not enough. Mm. But I think a lot of Nigerians, by and large, majority of Nigerians will remember him as a man who tried and who failed as a man under whom Nigeria became much more divided, mm. you know, than the country has ever been, except for the period that led to the civil war. You know, so he did not, he promised unification, you know, he promised to heal the wounds of division, but under him, there was greater division in the country, greater suspicion, you know, along parochial lines in the country. And I think that, you know, history, will not be kind and favorable to Mohamed Buhari. That is my take. Well, and on that very sad note, I want to say thank you. Achike Chude is a political analyst. Always a pleasure to have you join us on the conversation. Thank you. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll get back to discussing the ADC campaign flag off and, of course, other matters arising within the party. Stay with us.